Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to another video. Today we are just going to play. I'm going to show you one of my favorite ways to create a uh, no stress method. And um, we're going to be using the Kiritaki Ganzai Tampi paints. And let me show you uh, my color palette. That's the only thing that I have picked out. So uh, let's see here. I hope you can see this. Okay, I'm trying not to get a glare. So this is the Sarah Renee uh, Clark color palette catalog. This is, I'm using volume two. There's one and two. And this color palette is 307. And then you can see she's got five colors here. And um, I don't always stick to these 100%. So an example is uh, she's got a black in here. And I do have it, but I don't know that I'm going to use it. Um, sometimes I kind of like to vary things. And then I also picked a, a green color that wasn't on the color palette at all. So we will see how this goes. So let me show you what colors I've got picked out. So dark green is 504 green gray. And then this is the Art Nouveau set. Um, but I also have the 48 set and I have uh, number 47 raw umber deep which comes from the 48 set and 401 flax beige 19 which is potter's pink and then this is my edition 405 green gold so we will see if we if that changes uh, let me, I've got some clean water. I'm just going to activate these real quick. The nice thing about these is that you can use them um, thicker or thinner and get really different effects. So if I'm going to use them um, um, in a thin, more like watercolor way, then I'll, you know, just drop a little water in these little wells here and then if i want to thin them out it's really easy to do uh paper we have i'm working on a big old block today uh this is the uh, i don't know how to say this bao hong um pure watercolor paper uh watercolor cotton paper uh, it's Academy. I don't know why it's Academy because it's 100% cotton. But anyway, uh, I really do like this paper. It has an awesome texture to it. And I love the block because you don't have to tape that down. And so I'm working really big um, or bigger than usual today. And that, keep getting little crumbs. Um, that's one of my favorite ways to create is just get a big piece of paper and just work very intuitively over the whole thing, not worried at all about composition. And then once we get done, uh, we'll pick out some areas we like and cut it down. And I have a size six Princeton Aqua Elite uh, quill brush. This is a pretty new brush to me. All right, let's see. I'm going to start with this flax beige color. Like I said, we are not worried at all about composition rule of thirds any of that kind of stuff we are just gonna have fun i love getting that kind of dry brush texture look that's always fun 
and I am going to use this green gold. I just have to. <laughs> I have to. Oh, yes. It's pretty bright, but. I really do like it. We don't care about blooms. Got a little bit of a different setup here. I lowered my camera down. So hopefully y'all won't be seeing the top of my head <laughs> anymore. Yeah, I think I want to thin that down a bit. Oh, that's looking pretty. How it bloomed out there. I like that. But oh, let me maybe thin this out. And here's that potter's pink. I really love this color. I can thin that out a little bit too. Oh, that looks good. See, it's always so fun to get these little surprises. You never know what you're going to get, right? And her pink over here. And then I'm going to put a little bit of the thicker. See, it's so cool because you can get um, just different shades depending on how thick or thin. You make your paint. I want to kind of drop some paint into this wet area. And of course, you could leave white space if you like i kind of when i'm doing it this way and i'm going to cut it up i do like to cover the whole thing Brown over here. Oh, I'm really gonna like this. I can already tell. So when you're working like this, it's just so freeing because you're not stressed out about, uh, you know, the rules or uh, trying to make something realistic. And of course, there's nothing. Oh, look at that. There is nothing wrong with that at all. But sometimes you just like to do art for fun. And you really don't want to. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but like for me, a lot of times I would find that. Like I was so focused on trying to uh, 
make sure everything was perfect and uh, if it didn't look right i'd be really unhappy with it and want to throw it away and i just found that when i allow myself to be free with my painting process that um i enjoyed it like a so much more i hope that i can share that with you guys because when you let go of the perfection it really makes the process so much more enjoyable this has turned out to be a pretty cool color palette now that looks quite a bit different from that to me this looks more olivey this looks more yellow but i do uh i do like it but i'm not going to use a, very much of it i don't think I'm just going to use like a light wash over here just to kind of cover up some of the white. I don't know, we could leave a little white in there. Get a little green that's a little darker than this, but not super dark. Everybody getting ready for Christmas? My daughter always decorates our tree for us. But this year we've got a wedding coming up. And uh, she's also graduating from college. And she wasn't able to do the tree this year. And apparently mom wasn't able to do it either because it's not nearly as nice as it normally looks. All right, we'll let that run a bit. Let's do just a little more maybe of this beige color. I just love when these colors just react with each other and kind of blend. May get something that looks a little muddy from time to time, but you can always uh, put something over it. You can layer with acrylic. More of this. Hey, a little of this, a little of that. I know. I can hear the sirens from the watercolor police. <laughs> They're coming to get me. But that's okay. I refer to myself as a recovering perfectionist. Not that there's not a place and time for attention to detail and getting things right. Because there he is. But if you're stressing yourself out over something that's supposed to be enjoyable, then what's the point? I think. It is harder for me to work on a big area. Like, I find myself kind of struggling to fill it, fill it up, you know? Well, I work smaller a lot of the time. Okay. 
what should go there? Let's do a little light green. No, no. Let's do a little more pop of this yellowy green. Let's just do it. And you definitely wouldn't, you know, you don't have to cover all your white space. I'm going to leave a little bit here and there probably. I'm covering it up. <laughs> all right. Now I think what I'm going to do is I have my I picked out an ink tints pencil Derwin ink tints in the color bark and I thought it might be kind of fun to do some mark making through the wet paint Mm, see, this right here is magic. Through that wet paint is awesome. All right, what else do we need? I think we need maybe a little bit of splatter. Like in these little lighter areas. Just see what happens. Not to go overboard here. Since the paper's still wet, it's just kind of blooming out for the most part. All right, let's see. I want to kind of use this fan brush. I've got a fan brush pulled out over here. What? Color could we do? Let's see. Let's do a little bit of green, this dark green. It's going to use a fan brush and kind of thicker, thicker paint. Let's see, where do we want this? Well, it might be a little too thin. Oh, that's good. Like that. Yeah, get that really thick paint. That's better.
That's nice. I like that. Let me try not to go overboard. <laughs> okay, I'm going to let this dry for a minute and I will be right back. Okay, that is dry. And I have to say that I really, really like this uh, color combination. It has a very, I don't know, like a deserty uh, sunset kind of vibe. So, you can do this a couple of different ways. Um, normally when I'm painting, I will go from, you know, when this is dry, I'll go on top, maybe do some stencil work with um, like acrylic. But I was um, debating on that because I do kind of like how it's looking. And I have to be honest, I was playing around uh, with the viewfinder while it was drying, just kind of going around and seeing what I could find. Of course, it looks like a hot mess like this, but you can go around with your viewfinder then and pick out spots that look good to you. And I have to say that I kind of found this little area in here that I really, really like. So you could do, if you want to add more to this, you could uh, pick out an area you like, go ahead and cut it, and then you can embellish it when, like, you already have an idea of what it's going to look like. Or, you can do it now and then, you know, look at it and see, uh, you know, that might kind of change what you like, you know, what you want to cut out of it. So, oh, that looks really good, too. Gosh. And sometimes it's just really hard to choose. But... Um, Let's see. This one is a little smaller than a five by seven. Um, I also have these little uh, L shapes that I can, you know, basically adjust. So you, can, I just cut these on a mat board, and then you can decide. Uh, you can kind of move them around and see. Well, would I like this better? Maybe in a um, horizontal layout or maybe more vertical and you can change the size so that's a pretty handy little uh, way to look at these so I'm trying to decide how big I think I want to do this I need a live audience so y'all can help me pick but I like this kind of over, you know, it's not in the center. I like it over there to the left. And so what I'm thinking is I might, I know I want some gold. I've already got that in my head. So I might add a little bit, you know, of something down here, maybe up here. We'll throw a little something over there, and then uh, we can kind of decide where exactly we want to cut this. All right, so let me do. I uh, was going through some stencils, and I got um, these two. I may do like some these little uh, different size dots. Uh, over there, but I think that I want some stripes, these little stripey guys, somewhere over here. So my favorite acrylic um, gold paint is this Modern Masters uh, in rich gold. I have it uh, listed in the description, 
but it's such a good color. It's really easy um, to use. I like to basically shake it up and like dip my sponge in the lid. So, and you can use any kind of, you know, sponge or tool that you want. I've got to might use one of those, but I use a dry sponge. All right, so I got that shook up. Okay, you see it's not too thin, so I really like it for stenciling. All right, so let's just do a little bit down here. Then let's see, I need a scrap piece of paper. Okay. If I'm not using a palette, then I'll use like a little scrap paper and get the extra off. Because if you dip in there and go straight to your stencil, you're likely to have a big old blob. And it'll, uh, you know, kind of run underneath your stencil. That one did just a little bit, I think. Maybe not. Down here. Hold off the paper. Okay, I like that. And it kind of goes with these lines from the fan brush. Oh, hang on, I'm throwing stuff in the floor. All right, I think I want, because I might wind up liking something over here, but I'm not totally sure what that is. I'm going to go this other direction with some of these lines here, this stencil. I think, I'm trying to think of where I got this stencil at. It might have actually been Timu. And unfortunately, it's kind of hard to link stuff from Timu because it changes all the time. Looks great. See, look at that gold. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but I love it so much. Of course, y'all probably know that I'm a sparkly girl anyway. Okay, so I think I want to do some of these dots. Let's see, somewhere in here. Hang on, let me get myself situated. Okay, that's pretty good. See, like I don't have a bunch of extra on there. I've also been using a stencil brush uh, lately, and I like like that as well. Oh, that looks great. Go up here. I'm going to do some over here somewhere because I'm thinking, like I said, that I'm going to probably like maybe a you know, much smaller little piece on this side. It's 
See, and if you do your, if you cut it first, then you can kind of control your composition. Oh, maybe I should draw that, but I just want to look at this real quick. Let me see if I can do this without making a mess. Yeah, I think something like that is going to look really good, really, really good. Mm -hmm. But do I need, I feel like we might need a tiny bit of something right there. More dots, maybe. Kind of bring it all together. Just a very few, though. Just a very few. Kind of in this area. Okay. Just so it won't be naked. I can't be naked. Oops. Must have had a mess there. Okay, let's check that out. Yeah, that's going to look really good. All right, I'm going to dry this. And then we will come back and get her cut up. Okay, I, I like it, I think, right here. So. A couple of different ways to go about this is you could, you know, lightly with a pencil, kind of make the marks where you think you want your frame cut. And that way you could cut it out like that. I just know from here over this way i don't want to cut anything off extra and i need a little bit of extra room probably for framing but well i was gonna say we could go over here and look i've got a little four by four viewfinder oh see and the reason I have uh, four by four is I have a few little small wood panels, wood cradled panels. Now that could be really nice going the other way if we added a little something to that. But yeah, I don't like that as much, I don't think. Okay, so what I was gonna say is I have some four by four wooden cradles. And from time to time, I will, if I do something like this and I like it, I will cut out. All right, let's cut right about here. That way, it just gives me a little room on this side and that side for framing. Uh, but. Anyway, if I get a good little extra piece out of here, then I have those uh, four by four panels and I can just mount my paper to the, to the board. And that's just a quick, easy way to frame those little pieces. I think I'm going to wind up getting two good pieces of art out of this mess. <laughs> All right. Oh, this hat stuck good. Okay. Let's get that paper trimmer.
I just thought I'd cut that here. Go all the way through. Yeah. So funny how it makes such a difference um, when you cut it down or put a mat over it. It's crazy. I'm going to add just a tiny bit extra. Uh, let's. Let me see, what did I do with that? Five by seven. How close was that to a five by seven? That is just almost right at it. Of course, it's not a true five by seven. The mat comes in just a little bit so yeah all right so i'm just gonna cut i'm gonna leave a little extra on that both sides And there's something fun for a collage material. Okay. That looks so good, you guys. I love that. Love it, love it. All right. So there is that. And let's see what we got out of this little guy. You can always go add more. See, we didn't, I didn't really like that area so much, but I do like this. So we can take that. We can do some mark making on that. Got that. Yeah, I like it right there. Let's see. I'm just going to trim that. And then we have an extra little piece as well. Mm, that's going to look so cute. All right. So I will probably add a little more to this, and then we will call her done. All right. Let me get a little more of that gold paint real quick. Look, I'm excited about these. So this has got to be the easiest way I know to get some good looking abstract art without all this, without stressing over it. So I may have to go in and trim this just to touch more, but I think it's going to fit behind my, behind my mat here. Yes. Actually, I think I like it a little bit more down. 
There it is. There they are, guys. Let me hold them up so you can look at the. Oh, sorry. I don't know how to work the camera. <laughs> look at that. It's so cute. And I want to show you this texture. We got some really good texture. All this right in here. I love how those colors all mixed. That uh, Bao Hong paper is a really nice paper. I like it a lot. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And I appreciate you liking and subscribing. And keep those comments coming. I love to hear from you. And I will see you on the next video. Bye, y'all.